Lotus Ocean is about the ancient Vedic way, but it's not just ancient because it's scientific. The actual ancient Vedic way is a scientific way. Uh, it, like right now, science has reached that level where it can sort of validate that way being the correct way, or that way being the only way one can live and die successfully. We cannot say in one sentence because life is a complex thing and one, if one puts it in one sentence then one demeans life in a way. When we look at the word lotus ocean, the term, there are two things in it, lotus and ocean. Now this ocean here we are talking about is not just the physical water ocean. It is the ocean of existence itself. The lotus here represents uh, the actual um, symmetry and the fractality which produces life in the first place. When we are on this planet Earth right now, we are still inside an ocean. And like the physicists and will put it as that we are inside an ocean of waves. We are still under waves. Even though we are in air, but we are still in, in waves. This, we are still under the ocean. We are not on top of the ocean. When we are in this realm, we are still under ocean. So that is the ocean we are talking about. Now this ocean has its characteristics and space is also an ocean and it has its laws. Lotus is a good starting point because even lotus represents the chakras inside our body. Because inside our body there are seven chakras and each chakra opens up like petals of lotus only. So because that is also a shape. So if you have charge inside a body and that charge shape inside a body where the actual uh, uh, coherence occurs looks like a lotus inside the body. So that's why it's called chakras and chakras are shown as lotuses. So uh, to understand lotus, we have to understand that there is a actual lotus inside of us, which are the chakras. And if we open that lotus up, then only we are going up towards the lotus ocean way of life. This is a very ancient Vedic symbol, uh, which is uh, like, which looks like this. Now, a symbol doesn't have an uh, actual sound associated with it. For example, when we go into the Devanagari script, and you have a, a, e, e, and everything, and ka, ka, ga, so you know ka is like that, and that's called ka. But the sound associated with this particular symbol was not known, so nobody had written it down. So people started calling it Om. 
like so everybody started calling it om om when this sound associated with this was not om it was actually like ah now this was the proper full sound which carried all the five vowels a e i o u in unison finishing with a m because m is a matter sound so like r starts with light and we finally end up in matter that was why it was symbol of creation if um, one looks at example of any one like let's say take gautam buddha's example and like where did gautam buddha get enlightenment was it in a concrete building was it in a, his house was it in his palace or was it under a tree uh, when you are under a tree you are under a branching which is the same as your brain Th so that's why it forms a fractal to your brain and then uh your concentration automatically increases your focus your coherent focus and attention span increases and that's why you can do what they call get into a meditative state much easier under a tree than any other place and that's what happened to gautam buddha when he was under the bodhi tree you want to understand what treeness is like what is treeness then um, treeness is actually branching so uh, all of nature is based on branching like the the way the branching happens in the brain the the same kind of branching happens in the tree and and in the branches so like uh, our brain is a little fractal and the tree is a bigger fractal which creates a fractal even onto the stars like stars of orion in the sky and the three pyramids of giza which are mirroring those stars on the belt of orion on earth then that is fractality there are two ways things function in the multiverse it is one is outside in and the other is inside out you know outside in is like for example if you have to make a cloud you actually take a plane up to the sky and you throw silver nitrate crystals in the sky and you actually artificially make a cloud and the inside out way will be you actually sit down and you get your heart going uh, beating in a fractal way and you throw out an intent a cloud be made and rain happen and then a cloud will get made outside and the rain will happen so that's called inside out way for example if you play some sound and some rainbow happens in the sky that means you played the right sound which nature gave a biofeedback it produced a rainbow in the sky uh, you played a certain sound and then uh, maybe rain started happening i had gone to australia and there was one place where rain had not happened for a long time and i played a certain thing and rain happened within an hour or two it was a big thunderstorm the whole evening it 
was lightning, thunder, and it was all rain. All technology always is actually coming from the outside in way instead of the inside out way. But inside out way is always a more supreme way. It is it is much more uh, potent and it will always win over the outside in way. Nature responds to intention immediately. So intent is everything when it comes to nature. People have a like a sort of a war with earth itself, like Mitti. Wherever people see Mitti, people say, oh what nonsense. Like people see Mitti on their clothes, then they say like, oh what is this nonsense. People see Mitti on their uh, houses, they want to take get rid of it. As if Mitti is some kind of demon. <laughs> when Mitti is actually the thing which grows their food. They are on war with Mitti. <laughs> it's a, which means you are on war with your own body. And if you are on war with your own body or biology, then you will not win. All you will get is diseases, pain, torture and in the end, hell. After death. That's the only thing one is going to get. So this whole mentality of war against nature, biology and mitti has to end. Divine is complete, full fractality and nature is always tending towards fractality. Like a person has connection to nature. I can sign my name under it that that person will never get depressed. Clinically, never get depressed. Depression is not possible. You know, a lot of people ask me this question. It's like, but how do we connect with nature? No, how do we connect with nature? Uh, my answer to that always is that, like, tell me, how do you connect with people? With anybody, any person. First, if you have to connect with some person, you'll have to show interest. Secondly, you, when you go in front of them, you'll have to behave properly in front of them. So in the same way you connect with nature. First you have to show interest in nature and you have to approach with respect and you have to approach properly and then you form connection with nature. It's very simple. <laughs> There's no big mystery to that. Many people ask me who I am. It's strange as they don't know who they really are. Shant is the equivalent of Pacific, the ocean which covers two-thirds of the Earth's surface. Praha is Sanskrit for waves. waves. Shant is peace, so we have wave resolution non 
destructive interference amongst waves leading to super luminal faster than light speed implosion Trivedi is the three Vedas the three main systems of knowledge in the multiverse the egyptian angle p equals virgo equals mercury equals hermes trivedi is the same as trismegistus so p trivedi is hermes trismegistus the all knowing one pt is also the root of p t a h ta in sanskrit pita pati the original patriarch p is proper t is crossing a proper crossing across the ocean of illusion Skywalker flies. P is the axis. T is turning. P is the pole you spin around. What was lost is now being found. the word avatar in sanskrit means crossing over like you cross over avtaran there are many purposes to an avatar like for example like if an avatar comes down it uh, is there to raise the bhudevi's vibrations up that is one of the purposes to save bhudevi basically uh, then to set up standards and precedents for future times that is also a reason but still the most important reason is to actually save the spirits and take them out give them an opportunity to get out of the physical realm of existence that is the main purpose avatar is basically something which is coming from the divine realm comes back into the physical but is like everybody else when it when it's here it's not like just because you're divine everything will just happen it doesn't happen like that once you go into the prison like the rules of prison break are the same for everybody so whether it's divine or normal be that does not differ for that so the whole point is it goes into the prison to teach prison break to the beings which are already there even in like krishna avatar one can see that when it they showed like krishna was born into a prison straight he was born straight into a prison you know and then the prison lo- got unlocked and he came out you know so that is a metaphor for being trapped in the physical world the physical world is the prison itself so once you've gone into the prison you've gone into the prison of your own accord you know other people uh, when they come normal spirits when they are born into this prison they do that because they have no other option because they are just caught in the cycle of birth and death they don't have enough uh, no knowledge or energy to get out of the 3d existence into the other realms but when divine makes that journey it is done through one's own will divine does that from one's own choice when you are trying to get in touch with your vedic roots then you will become actual resident of this land land land